Hi, I'm Marcus Hutzel. And recently, I needed a way to have a wireless video viewing rig to view multiple cameras remotely and also have a way on the same rig to wirelessly switch which camera I was viewing so that I could walk around a large studio space and view all the cameras on a single handheld screen without having to walk all the way back to the control station to switch cameras and without having to yell across the room for someone else to do it. So I built this little wireless video rig that I can also switch cameras with. It's kind of my little secret weapon for being able to be mobile and get up and go have conversations with the client or the technical crew about camera angles, check exposure and color, all while not being tethered to a desk or having wires trailing behind me. So I put together this little rig and have been using it for fairly large multiple camera setups for live streams and broadcasts, but it's also handy on just multiple camera video or film shoots as well. And before we go any further, for those of you out there in live production, I don't use this wireless video switching rig to switch the actual live show when we're on air or streaming. For that, during the show, I'm always sitting back at the video switcher with my hands on the switcher controls. But this is a great tool to use to remote control your main video switcher during those setup and rehearsal days and saves my feet and my patience when building a show and talking to the crew and the clients. So real quick, in my professional work with a mostly live event production company here in Austin, Texas, I find myself in many different roles, mostly as a project manager overseeing the entire production and sometimes filling in for other roles like being the audio specialist or building a lighting rig, or most recently as the video engineer for a nine camera live broadcast from our studios in South Austin. We were running two stages within close proximity to one another in the same studio, kind of like a news broadcast going back and forth from stage to stage. We had nine cameras, which consisted of three cameras on the main stage, two cameras on a secondary stage, a camera on a jib that swung between both stages, a fixed wide shot of the entire studio space, a camera in the green room, and a roaming wireless camera on a gimbal. A pretty fun and technical show, all live streamed to a few thousand people. My role was to actually switch cameras for this show, but my station with my video switcher was behind the physical set, behind this huge LED wall. I couldn't see the set, I couldn't see my camera operators, I couldn't see the technical director, and I couldn't see the clients, but I found that I often needed to get up and go out in front of the stage and talk about camera angles or color changes or exposure or framing during the setup and rehearsal days and still be able to view any camera, make changes and see those changes through a more professional, more color accurate monitor. So I did that with this little rig. I'm able to carry this around and send the main program output of my switcher to my little Atomo Shinobi screen here. Very handy. And to make a long story short, my iPhone is able to remotely view and control my laptop wirelessly and my laptop is able to control the video switcher. Ergo, my iPhone can now control the video switcher. So this little rig consists of a small five inch monitor, a wireless HDMI transmitter and receiver kit, my iPhone, a small wireless network router, and most importantly, a video switcher that has some sort of software or browser-based control interface that runs on a Windows or PC laptop. And that part is important. And of course, you'll need a laptop or other computer to run that software. In this example, I'll be using a Blackmagic A10 Mini, but during the last live show, I was using a Blackmagic 1ME video switcher, both of which though can be operated by the Blackmagic software control from a laptop or desktop computer and some mounting hardware to mount all this stuff so it can be handheld. So here's the gear that I'm using, but let's disassemble this thing real quick. So I've got a Manfrotto Pixie tripod, which isn't the best tripod for this setup. It works, but I do find that with all the weight that we're about to put on this thing, the Pixie's friction ball head can still fall out of place when all that weight is on there. So it works for me. Your mileage may vary. Pick any tripod you like. And I'm using an Arca Swiss plate and receiver for easier mounting and dismounting of the rig from the tripod. I'm using an Atomo Shinobi monitor, but you can use a larger monitor or any monitor that you trust. A Hollyland Mars 300 standard wireless transmitter and receiver kit. A few Sony L-series NPF batteries, one for the Shinobi, two for the Mars receiver and transmitter. Although the transmitter can also be run off USB-C power. I've got a small rig cold shoe adapter mounted to the top of the Shinobi, a dual cold shoe mount to go into that small rig receiver, a swiveling smartphone mount with cold shoe plate, a small wireless travel router that also has physical RJ45 ports. This one is a GL.inet gigabit travel router. This thing is tiny and awesome, but you can use any router that has wired ports 
and its own wireless network. I wouldn't use just a switch for this. I'd use a router as it will keep your rig isolated from other networks. A router will distribute its own IP addresses and most switches don't generate a Wi-Fi network anyway, otherwise it would be a router. So a router is the best option here. A couple of Cat5e or Cat6 cables, an ATEM mini video switcher, but this can be any switcher that can be connected to a Mac or PC and be controlled through a laptop or desktop computer. And of course you'll need a laptop. I'm just using my 13 inch and one MacBook Pro. So let's build this mobile rig real quick. The Arca Swiss receiving plate obviously goes first on the tripod. I've got the plate already mounted on the Shinobi, so that's next. I've also already got the small rig cold shoe adapter mounted to the top of the Shinobi. Next, I add the dual cold shoe mount. Then the Mars 300 comes with some mounting hardware of its own. So I use the included adapter there. Then I put the receiver on the left side. I put my swiveling phone holder on the right side. Add some batteries for power. One on the Mars 300, one on the Shinobi. Connect the output of the Mars 300 to the input of the Atomo Shinobi. And then I just add my iPhone to the iPhone holder. And that's pretty much it for the mobile portion of this rig. So once the rest of this is hooked up, I'm able to switch inputs on the ATEM or any other video switcher using my iPhone. Now I'm not actually using any sort of native video switcher app on my iPhone because most manufacturers don't have a legitimate iOS app for their switchers. So I'll get into how exactly I'm doing this in just a bit, but for the rest of the setup, the video switcher is sitting wherever it needs to sit to accept all the physical inputs from the cameras or other video sources via HDMI or SDI cables. And it's hooked up to my laptop via a wired network connection through this mini router. And with everything hooked up on the video switcher laptop side, even without the wireless rig, I can now control the ATEM Mini using the Blackmagic ATEM software control directly from my laptop. You can see here, when I click on Cam 2, the switcher itself will then switch. So I'm clicking over here, the switcher switches inputs. And this is a pretty standard and regular way to program and control video switchers, and you can do this with any Blackmagic switcher. The software is free, but some other brands of switchers also have a software or browser-based version of their switcher control. So it's just important that your switcher is able to be controlled from a laptop like this for this mobile phone wireless portion of this rig to work. So the switcher is set up and on the network and controllable, and since the router also generates a wireless network, Anything that joins that wireless network is now on the same LAN or local area network as this computer and the switcher. So I connect my phone to that wireless network being generated by the router and now my laptop, the switcher and my iPhone are all on the same network and they can all now communicate with each other. So the last bit is to take the Hollyland wireless transmitter, power it of course, put it on a tripod if you wish. And then usually what I wanna do is connect the program output of the switcher to the Hollyland transmitter. In this case, the ATEM Mini only has a single HDMI output, so that's what we'll use. So now if I have the HDMI output set up as my program output, whatever input is live on the switcher will go to the Mars 300 transmitter and then transmit it over to the Mars 300 receiver and then I will see it on my mobile rig. I actually have two cameras rolling, and if I physically switch using the switcher, you'll see the monitor here switch, go to camera two, and now we've got the overhead shot filming this video, and we'll go back to camera one on the switcher itself. And now here's where the remote control part comes in, because again, my goal is to have the switcher wherever it needs to be to accept those video inputs while I'm able to switch while walking around with this rig. And I'm just using a remote desktop app here on my iPhone, so my iPhone can find, see, view, and interact with whatever is on my laptop screen. It's just the same as Windows Remote Desktop or Apple screen sharing, and actually that's what I'm using. I'm using the MacBook's built-in screen sharing functionality of Mac OS, and I'm using my iPhone as the remote viewer. So I can just see everything that my laptop is doing here on my phone. On my phone, I use a VNC app. I'm just using this one called VNC Viewer. And VNC stands for Virtual Network Computing. Basically, VNC apps on one device can view the screen of another device as long as you have some sort of VNC receiving app or service running on the receiving device. In this case, again, my laptop. And the screen sharing function also allows VNC connections. All VNC really is is a remote desktop app but they usually let you interact with the remote screen so I can click around on anything and I can even type if I wanted to. And using a VNC app like this is the reason I need this wireless router. 
because my phone and the VNC app can only find and communicate with my laptop if they're on the same local network in this type of setup. My phone is connected to the router's wireless network and my laptop and switcher are hardwired into the same router and network so they can all communicate. So now with the VNC viewer, once connected to my laptop, I can see exactly what's on my laptop screen. And I can interact with it. I can close and open files if I wanted to and basically do anything on my laptop from my phone. But basically all I really wanna do with this is make sure the video switcher app, in this case again, Blackmagic Video Software Control is open and in front so that my phone basically just sees that. So now I can actually click on different inputs and if you watch me click on my phone here, you'll see the switcher down here make the same changes. So I'm gonna click on the program output here. I'm gonna click on camera two. You can see that the switcher went to camera two. And if I put my screen in view over here, you can see the Shinobi right there. I'm going to click back to camera one. You can see the switcher switch and you can see the Shinobi switch to camera one as well. So now my phone is controlling the switcher and controlling any cameras that are connected to it wirelessly. I can click on camera one and camera two. You can see the switcher switch. I even have a third camera for this example right there in my little Sony RX100 Mark II. Let's go back to camera one. So this is great. This basically, again, allows me to be wireless. I mount my phone right up here, and now I can walk around the studio space with all of this in one hand. I didn't wanna have something in both hands in case I needed to do something, grab a flashlight, grab a pen, write something down. I could just have everything in my left hand and make switches here on switcher, switches to camera two, switches to camera three, and Bob apparently might be your uncle. And none of this is new necessarily. Remote desktop apps have been around for a long time. They've been built into Microsoft Windows for well over 20 years. And again, this is the equivalent to Mac's built-in screen sharing on Mac OS. This whole thing is similar to using any of the internet-based remote control software like TeamViewer or LogMeIn, but this setup does not rely on the internet. It's all running over this little local area network and is therefore usually faster and I can have complete control over the security and I don't have to rely on the internet. I can just set all of this up on my local network via my wireless router and find, connect to, and control my laptop. And this has been very handy, especially when there's limited crew on site or maybe the crew has already gone home and you need to do a last minute change. This has saved me from walking back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth from the different areas of the studio and to the video switcher. And granted, you can connect directly to the Hollyland transmitter's own wireless network using just an iPad or an iPhone and use the Hollyland app to view whatever the transmitter is sending. And you get exposure tools with the Hollyland app as well. And I think that's just fine most of the time using the Hollyland app because a lot of live events are being streamed to the internet and therefore most people out in the world are viewing content on either a laptop or an iPad, maybe an iPhone or Android or other mobile device. Therefore, the screens on iPads and Apple devices in general are a good way to check that your image is going to look good on a live stream. But connecting directly to the Hollyland transmitter with an iPad doesn't give me any ability to switch inputs like I'm doing during this setup. The setup also lets me take this rig out and do some color correcting of other monitors that may be on show site, like computer monitors or cheap TVs, maybe that aren't really matching my true color. And I can dig into the menus of those monitors and really try to match as closely as possible those other monitors to my more color accurate monitor so that when people call out things, I know that if I did a little bit of walking around with my rig and checking other monitors, I know what those people are seeing and what they're actually asking for. If they're looking at a monitor that may be overly saturated or has too much contrast, then they may ask me to make a change when in fact the camera view is perfect and the color is great and it's just that one monitor in the room that someone's fiddled with the color before the show. Now, some of the cons of using this setup, in my opinion, are the fact that most video switchers don't have a native iOS or Android app to be able to connect to the switcher directly. So we have to use something like a VNC viewer in this type of setup. And of course, you're trying to view a laptop screen from a much smaller mobile phone screen. And even though you can interact and pretty much do anything you need to on the laptop screen and the switcher control, it's not always precise and you may click on the wrong input or just hit the wrong thing on this tiny iPhone screen. Also, you may be limited by the wireless range of the router, as well as the wireless range of the HDMI transmitter and receiver kit brand and model that you're using. 
Both of those things are going to be dependent on the physical space you're in, how big that space is, how many obstacles may block, degrade, or interfere with your wireless transmission. But again, that's why we have testing and setup days, hopefully. And this is why I only use this as a testing tool and I don't actually use it to do any switching during the live portion of the show because I'm just not going to rely on Wi-Fi to control the switcher for the actual show. Now the Hollyland Mars 300 and other Hollyland products and other brands like Teradek are built and made for use during live productions to send wireless camera feeds to the video switcher or to record decks. And actually on this nine camera show that I've been talking about, once I was done testing, I took the same Mars 300 transmitter receiver, but I disconnected it from my testing rig and I set it up as the transmitter on my gimbal with my Sony a7 III and had the receiver back at my video switcher and my Sony a7 III then became my roaming wireless walk around camera. And it worked great for sending me the live feed of that camera. That camera was able to get shots that none of the other fixed cameras could get. So I just thought this little rig was something you might like to see. It's been very helpful to me on show site and building and testing shows. And hopefully something in this video has been enlightening, helpful, or at least entertaining a bit. I like taking the tools around me and building something that makes my job easier. The video switcher can't be controlled remotely? Oh yes it can. Yes it can. All right, later. Screen sharing feature, that's hard to say. Screen sharing feature, that's hard to say. She sells she, 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 she sells seashells, she sells seashells down by the seashore.